hospital infections are silent killers. Every year, they claim thousands of lives, and many start with something as simple as a catheter. But what if we told you there's a powerful, underused weapon that can drastically cut infection rates, saving lives, hospital costs, and your reputation? This isn't just another protocol, it's a game changer. In this video, we're diving into the real science, best practices, and latest breakthroughs in antibiotic lock protocols that every hospital should be using right now. Whether you're a clinician, infection control officer, or just passionate about patient safety, this is the protocol that could change everything. So hit that like button, subscribe, and let's revolutionize infection prevention, one line at a time. Our objectives include the following. 1. To understand the purpose and indications for antibiotic lock therapy. 2. To review preparation, administration, and dwell procedures. 3. To learn proper documentation and monitoring steps. And 4. To discuss special considerations for safety and effectiveness. We will begin with a background and indications. Antibiotic lock therapy involves instilling a high concentration antibiotic solution into the lumen of a central venous catheter, abbreviated as CVC, or other long-term intravascular device to treat or prevent catheter-related bloodstream infections, abbreviated as CRBSIs, especially when catheter salvage is desired. It capitalizes on a high antibiotic concentration to eradicate biofilms. Lock remains dwelling in the catheter and is not infused systemically. Indications for the use of antibiotic lock therapy include the following. 1. Confirmed or suspected catheter-related bloodstream infections. 2. Persistent positive blood cultures from a central line source. Three. Patients with limited vascular access or critical need for catheter continuation. 4. Long-term catheter use, e.g., dialysis, chemotherapy, and TPN. 5. Infection with low virulence organisms, e.g., CO agulis negative staphylococcus, enterococcus, some gram negatives. And 6 as adjunct to systemic antibiotics. We will now progress to the physician order verification. Before initiating antibiotic lock therapy, ensure the following. Review the medical order for the following. 1. Antibiotic name and dose. 2. Solution concentration, which is usually higher than systemic doses. 3. The volume required to fill the catheter lumen. 4. The dwell time, which is commonly 12 to 24 hours. 5. Frequency e.g., once daily, or every 24 hours. And 6. The duration of treatment, which is commonly 7 to 14 days. Regarding microbiology considerations, 1. Confirm organism identification and sensitivity. 2. Ensure selected antibiotic is appropriate for the infecting organism. And 3. Consider resistance patterns, particularly with biofilm producing organisms. We will now switch gears to the preparation phase. The materials required include the following 1. PPE, including gloves, mask, gown, and eye protection as per infection control. 2. Alcohol swabs or chlorhexidine 2% in 70% isopropyl alcohol. 3. Sterile syringes with a capacity of between 3 to 10 milliliters depending on volume required. 4. Saline flushes, usually 0.9% sodium chloride, and or heparin flushes, if your hospital protocol allows. 5. The prescribed antibiotic from pharmacy or compounded on site. 6. Labels for medication and catheter lumen. And 7. Waste container for biohazard disposal. 
We will now discuss preparation of antibiotic lock solution. Remember aseptic technique is required. If not pre-prepared by pharmacy, prepare solution under sterile conditions, preferably in a laminar airflow hood. The antibiotic lock solution composition is as follows. Antibiotic diluted in sterile saline or heparinized saline, typically 10 to 1000 units per milliliter of heparin. Typical antibiotic concentrations are as follows. 1. Vancomycin, 1 to 5 mg per milliliter. 2. Gentamicin, 1 to 5 mg per milliliter. 3. Cefazolin, 5 to 10 mg per milliliter. 4. Ethanol is also used in some protocols at concentrations from 30 to 70 percent. The final volume should match the internal volume of the catheter lumen, often 1 to 2 milliliters. Remember to check device specifications. Remember to label the syringe with the following information. Patient's name, medical record number, date, time, medication, concentration, and volume. Include the lumen designation if multi-lumen catheter e.g., distal lumen. Next we will focus on the administration process. 1. Regarding infection control measures perform hand hygiene and remember to don appropriate PPE. 2. Clean work surface with hospital approved disinfectant. And now we will focus on accessing the catheter. Scrub catheter hub or poured vigorously with alcohol or chlorhexidine swab for 15 to 30 seconds. Allow to air dry. Do not fan or blow. Next we will talk about administering the antibiotic lock. Withdraw any existing fluid or residual lock in the lumen. Aspirate and discard. Confirm catheter patency. This is optional and can be done by flushing with 0.9% saline. Slowly instill the antibiotic lock solution into the lumen. Do not flush into the bloodstream. Ensure full installation and secure the line. Clamp the catheter or apply a sterile cap depending on the catheter type. Repeat for each lumen if multi-lumen catheter. And now let's talk about dwell time instructions. The following are typical dwell parameters. The dwell time usually between 12 to 24 hours. During dwell, catheter should not be used for infusion unless clinically necessary. If the line must be used, remember to aspirate and discard lock solution prior to use. Flush with saline before administering medications. Remember to relock after use if ordered. We will now focus on documentation. Remember to record the following. 1. The date and time of lock installation. 2. Name of the antibiotic used, its concentration, and volume. 3. Which lumen was locked, e.g., proximal, medial, or distal. 4. Patient response or adverse events. 5. Instructions for removal or re-lock timing. And. 6. Name and signature of nurse or healthcare provider performing procedure. We will now consider what happens after removal or replacement of lock solution. At end of dwell time. 1. Perform hand hygiene and don PPE. 2. Scrub catheter hub again. 3. Aspirate and discard the antibiotic lock solution. 4. Flush catheter with saline and heparin if required by protocol. And 5. Instill a new antibiotic lock if continued treatment is prescribed. Next we will look at monitoring and safety. Let's begin with patient monitoring. Remember to watch for allergic reactions or sensitivity to the antibiotic. Monitor catheter site for signs of inflammation or leakage. Monitor for continued signs of infection, fever, chills, and positive blood cultures. Track lab markers such as WBC count, CRP, 
and cultures as directed by physician. Let's now consider a few safety notes. Do not use lock solution for systemic infusion. Incompatible medications should not be administered through locked lumens unless lock is first aspirated. Ensure correct dose and volume to prevent overpressurizing catheter. Let's now shift gears to additional considerations. Regarding multi-lumen catheters, each lumen may require separate lock. Label each lumen accordingly. Regarding pediatric or neonatal considerations, volume and concentration are adjusted for weight and lumen size. Use caution with heparin or concentrated antibiotics. We will now briefly focus on heparin versus saline-based locks. Heparin may help prevent occlusion, but avoid in patients with heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Some institutions use saline-only antibiotic locks. Do not mix incompatible medications. Remember to confirm compatibility with catheter type. We will now take a look at an example antibiotic lock protocol for vancomycin 1. The antibiotic name is vancomycin 2. Its concentration is 5 mg per milliliter. 3. Its volume is 2 milliliters per lumen. 4. Its dwell is or will last 24 hours. 5. The duration will be 10 days. 6. The specifications of the preparation are vancomycin 500 mg in 100 mL of normal saline, use 2 mL per lumen. 7. The label should read, vancomycin lock 5 mg per ml. Do not flush. Aspirate before use. And now in summary. Antibiotic lock therapy is a valuable tool in catheter-related bloodstream infection management. Requires aseptic preparation and correct technique. Remember to monitor closely and document thoroughly. And above all coordinate with physician and pharmacy teams. If this video made you rethink how your hospital handles catheter-related infections, then mission accomplished. Antibiotic lock therapy isn't just a protocol, it's a life-saving mindset shift. And every hospital that gets this right, saves money, protects patients, and builds a reputation for gold standard care. Tag a colleague. Send this to your nursing lead. If your hospital isn't on this yet, you're already behind. And if you want more no fluff, evidence-based insights that actually move the needle on hospital care. Hit that subscribe button, drop your questions below, and let's raise the standard, together. Oh, and tell us in the comments, is your hospital using antibiotic lock protocols? If not, what's the holdup?